Musk enjoys standing up for technologies we're not even sure are technologically possible yet. He talks about using electricity to power aircraft, connecting microchips to our brains to enhance our consciousness, and achieving nuclear fusion. He believes that if we make the fusion reactor bigger, it would be easy to make it work. Recently, he finally admitted that the only way to reach Titan in less than two years is with a nuclear thermal rocket instead of chemical propulsion, which would take around seven years. But how exactly is SpaceX going to make this a reality? Well, we'll delve into that in this video. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you won't miss any of our awesome videos. Is America ready for another rocket disaster? In a few months, there will be a second launch of Starship using an improved version of Booster 9 and a surprising collaboration with Ship 25. This upcoming test will mainly focus on the first stage flight with the booster. Although this particular booster doesn't have all the enhancements other ships at the production facility have, the launch pad is expected to be upgraded within a month. There will also be another month of testing before the next test flight. Elon Musk mentioned that Ship 25 is already at the launch site, awaiting a static fire test with its six engines. Booster 7 and Ship 24 recently took to the skies after more than a month of preparations, including some rollbacks for adjustments. However, during the launch, Booster 7 created a hole and caused a rock tornado leading to the need for a few months of modifications to the launch pad. Despite this setback, the next mission will be completed on time. The goal is to have a rapidly and utterly reusable system, with the objective of eventually launching from the same pad every day. Overall, the plan is to reduce the time spent preparing the launch pad, an important concept for Starship's future. SpaceX has installed a water-cooled steel plate and deluge system under the orbital launch mount to prevent a repeat of the concrete flying incident during the first launch. The preparation for installing the steel plates at this launch site has been ongoing, and they are expected to be in place within a month. After the pad repairs are completed, there will be a month of testing. In a recent Twitter update, Elon Musk mentioned possible cryo-proofing and static fire tests highlighting SpaceX test flight video. Ship 25's entire stack test, integration of Booster 9, and changes to the pad are all part of the testing process. Once Ship 25 completes cryo-proofing at the mass test facility, a six-engine static fire test will be conducted at the suborbital launch site. While there was uncertainty about the ship's choice, it was announced that Booster 9 would fly with the ship. Musk indicated that the focus of the next flight would be re-entry with the ship after Booster 9 completes its first stage mission. Ship 28 or Ship 29 are likely candidates due to their recent thermal protection system installations and compatibility with Booster 9's electric thrust vector control systems. Ship 25 being chosen for the test flight indicates multiple objectives to be achieved during the first stage. A fundamental improvement would be a damage-free ascent from the pad, continuing through staging with the ship. As SpaceX progresses towards operational missions, newer ships may replace the current ones. The manufacturing facility has booster pieces up to B-15 and ships portions up to S-34, showing great vehicle readiness. Booster 10 was recently relocated to Rocket Garden, potentially to make room for the ongoing production pace. SpaceX is recognizing its site, demolishing old structures, and expanding high base capacity. The LR-11000 crane will aid in constructing a new bay next to the Megaport. Starbase production will likely precede delivery to Kennedy Space Center KSC, as the initial flow path. The windbreak of the Starbase production site, used for working on nose cones and payload sections, was dismantled to make space for new facilities. Layout improvements will continue until next year, with plans to remove lengthy manufacturing tents and expand the Star Factory. The mid-bay will also be removed as high bay capacity grows. SpaceX dominates the private space industry, with their advanced Starship rocket potentially enabling establishing of a Martian base or city. In contrast, 
Polestar, an engineering company in England, is developing a spacecraft surpassing Starship in capabilities. They aim to provide commercial fusion power for Europe, focusing on reusable rockets and plasma thrusters for satellites. Polestar's innovation lies in the direct fusion drive, a technology that could revolutionize space travel. The plan is to test and deliver a functional prototype by 2027. The specific fusion reactor that will power the Direct Fusion Drive DFD, remains undisclosed as the project is still in its early stages and closely guarded as intellectual property. However, it is speculated that Tokamak's large donut-shaped reactors are the heaviest type. Tokamaks are unsuitable for spacecraft propulsion due to their bulky size, which hampers acceleration and increases fuel consumption. Pulsar aims to develop its tokamak in the future. In contracts, lighter interstellar reactors like those used in the National Ignition Facility employ different technologies. Pulsar's plasma thrusters align more closely with magnetized target fusion reactors, which are compact, powerful, and lightweight, functioning as highly efficient plasma rockets. Hellion's reactor employs a similar concept using fusion energy to expel plasma at speeds exceeding 1,000 miles per second instead of generating power. Pulsar's Direct Fusion Drive DFD, stands out as a potentially groundbreaking technology for space propulsion. Its unique combination of high thrust and high impulse sets it apart. Like ion thrusters, the DFD and Pulsar's plasma thrusters use electromagnetic forces to propel a small amount of fuel at incredible high speeds. While ion thrusters generate modest thrust, they can operate for extended periods with minimal fuel. In contrast, chemical rockets offer strong initial thrust but weak impulse, quickly consuming large amounts of fuel. Fusion engines like the DFD provide exceptional thrust while consuming little fuel, enabling longer and faster space travel and revolutionizing our exploration capabilities. Current propulsion systems limit interplanetary travel. While ion or plasma engines offer high speeds, they require decades for significant acceleration, limiting their usefulness to course corrections. Like the DFD, fusion drives can quickly accelerate for days, carrying large payloads to Mars. Should Pulsar develop a powerful fusion propulsion system, SpaceX's Starship may not be replaced for launch vehicles. DFD ships could excel in orbital operations, transporting hundreds of tons between Earth and Mars in half the time. This could make them ideal for logistical support, ferrying supplies and people to and from Mars, ensuring faster travel crucial for sustainable colonization. A powerful engine could revolutionize space exploration by enabling faster and more extensive missions. Current spacecraft, like New Horizons, Voyager 1 and 2, and Cassini took years to reach distant planets and had limited payloads. However, a DFD craft could potentially reach these far-off destinations in just a few years, allowing for more sensors, landers, and probes. NASA has even proposed fusion vehicles that could transport humans to the Proxima Centauri star system in under 10 years. While Pulsar's DFD holds promise for interplanetary travel, its effectiveness and surpassing the capabilities of a starship or reaching Proxima are still uncertain, even if the 2027 test proves successful. Elon Musk can now find a peace of mind. At the same time, the upcoming NASA Dragonfly mission generates excellent anticipation for its exploration of Saturn's moon, Titan. Set to launch in June 2027, this mission aims to study Titan, a moon with unique atmosphere, and a liquid cycle involving methane, making it a favorite among celestial bodies. The Dragonfly mission will deploy an advanced mobile lander equipped with eight rotors, surpassing the technological capabilities of the Mars helicopter's ingenuity. It will cover significant distances, about 10 miles per half hour flight, examining a vast region spanning hundreds of miles during its two year mission. To reach Titan's surface, Dragonfly must navigate through the moon's thick hydrocarbon smog fill atmosphere and perform a soft landing on frozen terrain. The chosen landing site is the Shangri-La Dune Field near Selk, a 50-mile wide crater. Planetary scientist Lee Bonifoy from Cornell University 
and her team have carefully analyzed images captured by NASA's Cassini spacecraft during its mission to Saturn from 2004 to 2017. Proving the most precise assessment of Dragonfly's proposed landing site to date. Dragonfly's upcoming mission to Titan's equatorial region, identified by Bonifoy, holds significant scientific value. This desert-like area experiences occasional methane showers and features dunes, mountains, and the Selk Impact Crater. Researchers propose a direct fusion drive DFD for faster Earth to Titan travel, outlined in a recent ACTA astronautic paper. The DFD, powered by Princeton's field reverse configuration concept, utilizes a unique radio frequency heating method and abundant hydrogen fuel. With a magnetic nozzle, the DFD achieves thrust by expanding the heated propellant. A second fusion reactor as a closed-looped power generator could extend Dragonfly's mission and enable sub-two-year travel to Titan. Nuclear power, including fusion and fission, shows promise for future space exploration. Thank you for watching today's video. Share your thoughts on Ship 25, Booster 9, and Pulsar's fusion rocket engine in the comments section below. Subscribe to our channel for more updates, and don't forget to like and share this video with your family and friends. Stay tuned for our next video.